Happy the day, ripped to 255. This morning we're kind of, I guess, in the pre-market in the prior resistance area from the prior one, two, three, three days, four days. Um, so we'll watch that. Uh, 254, 60, 254, 70. Um, we have trouble there again. We want to watch on a pull into 250, 450. Does it get below and start to stick below? IWM is getting kind of funny. Um, it just keeps on touching the support. I was, I bought some uh, puts right at the end of the day yesterday thinking they might gap it below support this morning. They didn't, they just gapped it right to support. Um, so this is day number eight, um, just tight consolidation and we've tested one, two, three, four, five, today's six. So six out of seven days we're touching this 149.40 area. Um, if you go in the daily on IWM, and the closest we've seen to this was back in May. It wasn't quite as clean and tight. It was almost, almost there. And this is it. Um, and you can see in this case, you know, 138 they were buying, and you can see all these wick, like every day it was like wicking below, wicking below. I mean, this day it really wicked below. I'm sure people shorted this day right here. Um, and it was staying below 139. So you can kind of see it was, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days, two weeks. Um, and then we just came in one day and I, I gapped it down. Uh, 38, 60. I gapped it down like $2. And we bought them the next day and ripped right back up and failed at the range. So, um, I was basically playing for the gap down this morning. Just didn't quite get a big one. I have the puts for next Friday. There's a little bit of time. So we'll watch today. Maybe it does an intraday. What you want to see is just a spike below this 149.30 area. Goes down to whatever. Doesn't matter. And then it comes back up. You want to see it fail below 149.50. And you play it for something like that. So anyway, I'm still short a little bit from up here. Um, I think I'm two days ago, right? From 150.18. And I got the puts. And just wait for confirmation. We get confirmation, I'll add to it. <laughs> All right, let's start with JNPR. Um, JNPR was on the band list many years ago. I just didn't like the way it traded. But it's gotten better the last few years. Um, the news, it's, it's such a strong catalyst that I felt compelled. And I was sold off into earnings, right? So. Clearly, something was going on here. Either people were anticipating good not good numbers, or maybe there's something going on with the sector the last couple of days. Um, but this thing had come off. Let's see. So it was being bought. Maybe it was a gap below this, where it was being bought the last couple of weeks, 2730 or something. The gap below that. Um, so it sold here. Heavy coming into earnings. Then the earnings number came out. You can see it went all the way down here. The guidance was not good. So I could see maybe a revisit to the after hours low. Let's get to one minute, see if we can see better how real that is. Yeah, that was real. The buyer stepped in, I guess, very quickly here from the low 24s, got it back above 25. So we want to use that 25 as an inflection. Um, actually, what do I have here? 25.50. Let's short some here. So I'd like to short some here uh, above 25.50. Um, even better if it spikes up a little bit more right in the open, um, closer to 26. And play it for move to 25, and then we'll see what happens at the 25 level. And it actually take that out, hold below, and play it all the way back down. Just a quick look at the daily. Uh, yeah, so on the daily, the 25 is pretty big support.
That's kind of where we are right now in the free market. Okay, so it's in this downtrend. It's going up, and right before earnings, they slam it. And I'm still, I'm still liking the short more than the long, but let's see, 30, yeah. 20% off the high would take it down to the, the after hours low. Um, and it's going to be liquid. It's, you know, it's going to trade, it normally trades 4 million. It traded 11 million yesterday. It's going to be very liquid. Uh, Hawk. So Hawk is less liquid. Um, but we have to talk about it because this one was pretty, pretty bad. Um, now it's, it's down a little bit more than I would have liked. Um, yeah. I was kind of hoping on the open we'd get a, a pop up to like uh, somewhere up here. Yeah, 21, 21 million. Uh, there's not demand for it right now. Um, so I'm long this. Also, ABEO. So you can kind of see this 41 and a half to 42 area. I think people would be very motivated to sell here. And we've already got it in the pre market below 40, so we've got to deal with this next. Oh, there with that. Um, CLSN, also high priority for me. And then I'm trying to establish a short end and pop it up on 550. Uh, small. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. What I put on the sheet? I put 39 on the sheet, but it's like 3880 here where it kind of broke out from and tested. Yeah, so I'm going to try to be patient with this one. A lot of times, like, I'll get a little spike here, I'll start shorting it, and then it gets to my price where I really want to short it, like 4130 or higher. Um, I'm in a position of weakness, and then later in the day it's at 39.50, but I had to play defense. So um, the only way I'd be really aggressive down at these, like this area down here, is if after 9.45, 9.50, it's it's kind of showing me that it can hold this area here, and I have a, a kind of a clean, low-risk situation. Um, and again, it's it's a much thinner stock, so that's makes that's why it, it's two things. It's one, it makes it more dangerous, but it also you know, a couple of buyers step in right on the open, and you can get that quick, just, you know, wick. Just, we'll look at this later today, the, the markup, and see it, like, up here, and see it down there, like, you know, 15 minutes later. So that's the good thing about a thinner stock. There is upside to them. Um, ATI, they updated guidance. They announced an impairment charge, um, but they said their numbers are going to be pretty much in line with what they said in July. Sometimes the market gets confused on these kind of an announcements, so... Maybe we could get some weird price action. It's in a very strong uptrend. I guess this area right here, 23.30. Where is it right now? 23.85 it's being offered at. Right, just not enough, enough volume for us to really, really say. So... I think right in the open, if it pops up and it has trouble at 2380, I would look at it on the short. Obviously, 2380 and 24 are your two levels there. Um, I put 24 as the first resistance as kind of your safer bet, that people would definitely be selling it into that. And then KD, and they did the secondary yesterday. That's, you know, it was our second best stock to so that each. Um, but each MNY was the best stock because it moved fifty dollars intraday or something, including the after hours. But MNKD was pretty clean, right? I mean, did the secondary at six? It came down right in the open. They popped it back above, and then once it consolidated below the secondary, um, and again, this is different. A lot of times you can hear me recently, um, even in something like MU, these secondaries we use them as a catalyst to buy. Um, the different in a pump and dump situation in these low price stocks, um, where there's nothing real there. Um, you you know you get a failure at the secondary it holds below you you short it and that's why you probably saw you know guys on the real time short it um, anyway it had some weird spike in the middle of the day used that to cover it came back up 
at a breakdown price almost. So it almost got back up to 575. We got to 572 a couple times. Um, we're just shorting into that. And just maintain this downtrend, really. Kind of see. It was making lower highs. Um, then this morning is down at five. So we'll see if five will be the level today. Obviously, if it spikes up into this area here, you want to short it. Um, HMMY, which, again, that was our best stock, um, mainly because of this move here. Um, it did go back up and give people a chance to, to short it um, at the highs again. And then wild that it came all the way back down to 30. So Citron said negative stuff about it. We were already, it already had like a blow off issues type top when he talked. Um, that caused this spike here down to 30. It popped back up to 34 before making the new low below 30, um, getting halted. Um, that's where most, most people were quick to cover, and that's smart. It's always smart in these situations when you're short and it's down a quick 20, 30% right on the open to cover and then look to sh you know watch the pops. In this case, people were probably reshorting into 34 here, started to roll over, then went back up to the high. Um, and then failed. And then the next consolidation, it broke to the downside. So the clean, this was a clean trade here. I'm sure people thought it was done for the day. It came up one more time back to where it kind of broke down from 36. In the after hours, they announced something. Market got confused. They dropped it down eight dollars um, before coming all the way back up. So it's still a wild, dangerous stock uh, until it starts closing a few days below thirty dollars. Um, you can see some wild gyrations probably. So, and I thought maybe if it popped up to 32 on the open, that would be the spot to short it. Um, my downside target yesterday was 26 to 28. And so I'm going to still use that. Kind of, it's kind of where it basically spent most of its time in the after hours yesterday. So people are shorting here. You look to maybe cover a little bit of risk at 30. And then into 28 and a half, 28, where it, it kind of bottomed after the halt yesterday. And finally into this, into this year. It does have the potential, though, to go all the way back down to probably $20, maybe lower. Uh, MU. So MU, so I, I held a little bit of my, I got short at it, stopped at most of my short above 41.50 yesterday, held a little bit. They priced the deal at 41, covered it, um, flipped long. Very few shares in the pre-market at 40.75. I thought they might drop it down a little bit lower. Um, and the the deal was priced at 41. Um, I would be looking to buy it into 41. Uh, I don't know if it's how much it's going to flush below there again. You can see in the pre-market it flushed. You know, and you can see even people are now on top of it. it. It does seem like it could test these these areas back up here again. 4160, 4180. Um, so focus on the long side down in the 40 41 area. Um, and then there was a question about Snap. Um, you know, I, th I feel like Snap, whenever it rallies, is a, a you look to short it. Um, I did see the the upgrade yesterday ahead of earnings by Credit Suisse. Um, and it looks like some hedge funds followed them into the close on that, unless there's some other news. Um, it's far enough off the lows now. And I'd probably be buying the 14 puts into earnings. I don't know what day they report, but it must be coming up. Uh, $12 is the bottom. It looks like it could get to 17. I mean, I, you know, it looks like it could get to like 1670 to 17, kind of where this was the last. Oh, that was the uh, that was the IPO price. That's where I broke down from there. So it's almost back up to the IPO price. I'm just I would not want to be long it into this this area right here. As always, be patient and good luck. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20-year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about 
what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.